Hi, this is Ken from the Educational Engineering Team. This course is all about getting started with Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi came around when I truly needed it, nearly a decade ago. I was actually bored and burnt out on technology, but figuring out on the Raspberry Pi, it actually renewed my appreciation of computers. Now Linux was frustrating to learn, and as well as this Raspberry Pi, but at the same time, it reminded me of editing the autox.bat and the config.sys files as a kid. I spent an entire day downloading and compiling the first software I found to turn the Raspberry Pi into a game console, only to discover that it didn't work. Now this roadblock led to days of troubleshooting on writing deadline before I finally fixed it. And today, I'll be teaching you on how to get started with Raspberry Pi. And at the end of this course, you'll be surprised because you will be able to learn on how to make amazing cool projects at the end of this video. So, are you excited? Let's head on to our first topic. Again, in this project, you will able to connect a Raspberry Pi computer and find out what you can do. Now, it is important to take note that this guide is an introduction to the Raspberry Pi computer. Now, there are also detailed guides to setting up your Raspberry Pi and using your Raspberry Pi. Now, Raspberry Pi is a low-cost credit card-sized computer that plugs into a computer monitor or television, and it uses a standard keyboard and a mouse. It is capable of little device that enables people of all ages to explore computing and to learn how to program in languages like Scratch, Python, and it's actually capable of doing everything you'd expect a desktop computer to would do. Now from browsing the internet and playing high definition video and to making spreadsheets and word processing and even playing games. What's more, the Raspberry Pi has the ability to interact with the outside world and it has been used in a wide array of digital marker projects from music machines and parent detector to weather stations and tweeting birdhouses with infrared cameras. And we want to see the Raspberry Pi being used also by kids all over the world to learn to program and understand how computers work. Now what you will make today is the Raspberry Pi is a small computer that can do a lot of things and you can just um, plug it into a monitor and attach a keyboard and a mouse. So basically, in this course on getting started with Raspberry Pi, you will be able to learn on how to use basic digital, analog, and electromechanical components. Now, additional also information for educators, if you need to print this project, you can just print the friendly version of this course. So, what will you need along this course? First is the hardware. You would be needing a Raspberry Pi computer with an SD card or micro SD card. Also, you would need a monitor with a cable. Now, this is optional. An HDMI adapter is also cool. You would also need a USB keyboard and mouse as well as a power supply, of course. Also, headphones or speakers. Now, this is optional as well as the Ethernet cable. Now, for the software, you would need to have Raspberry Pi OS and installed using the Raspberry Pi Imager. So go ahead and prepare these things before we proceed. Now I want you to meet the Raspberry Pi. Meet the Raspberry Pi 4. Now you're going to take a first look at the Raspberry Pi and you should have a Raspberry Pi computer in front of you for this. So as I've said, you need to prepare the program in your computer. Now look at the Raspberry Pi and here you can find all the things that is labeled on the diagram. We have the general purpose input and output pins. This is for connecting electronic components. Then we also have the Ethernet ports. Then we also have below it is the USB ports. Then below the Raspberry Pi diagram we have the auto jack, we have the camera module port, we have the HDMI ports. We have the micro USB power, 
and we also have the micro SD card underneath here in the left side so what are these parts so the uses of this first we have the USB ports now USB ports now they are used to connect a mouse and keyboard and you can also connect other components such as a USB drive for the SD card slot now that is used to insert the SD card there and this is where the operating system software and your files are being stored then we also have the Ethernet port earlier right now that is used to connect Raspberry Pi to a network with a cable the Raspberry Pi can also connect to a network via wireless LAN cable we also have the audio jack now the audio jack as we all know can be used to connect headphones and speakers here then we have observed for the HDMI port now this is where you connect the monitor or projector that you are using to display the output from the Raspberry Pi and if your monitor has speakers you can also use them to hear sounds then we also have a part there on the micro USB power connector now this is where you connect a power supply and you should always do this last after you have connected all your other components then lastly we have the GPIO ports and this allows you to connect electronic components such as LEDs and buttons to Raspberry Pi so now I'll be teaching you on how to do or how to use the Raspberry Pi step by step so make sure on your end that you have ready your Raspberry Pi software or your computer for you to follow me hands-on so again what is a Raspberry Pi and where is it being used now the University of Cambridge um, computer library is using the Raspberry Pi um, Raspberry Pi decline in skill level it is designed for education it is a credit card size PC a, it is being plugged into a television or computer or a, any monitor and Raspberry Pi is actually inexpensive it is around $35 each it has a good capability as well as programming and electronic projects and an office and it also it can play high definition videos for the kit components for the Raspberry Pi the essentials would include the Raspberry Pi board the prepared operating system SD card the USB keyboard the display with HDMI DVI or composite input then another essential is the power supply for the highly suggested extras would include USB mouse, internet connectivity, LAN cable, power USB hub, and a case for protection of your Raspberry Pi. For the programming languages, the Raspberry Pi Foundation recommends Python, any language which will compile the ARM version 6 that can be used and installed by default on the Raspberry Pi. We have the C, we have the C++, we have the Java which I believe is quite familiar to you. We also have Scratch and lastly we have Ruby. So Raspberry Pi is in the primary education. You can just watch this link for a better explanation on the Raspberry Pi being used for the kids out there. So what are the main 10 uses for a Raspberry Pi? The 10 is the programming. Raspberry Pi programming is the process of using code to create programs that run on Raspberry Pi devices. Programs that can be written in a variety of languages including Python, C++, and Java. Raspberry Pi programming allows developers to create projects that interact with the physical world, such as controlling motors or sensing environmental conditions. It can be used with Python and Scratch. Raspberry Pi is actually a way to create software for the Raspberry Pi computer as I've said for Python programming language and actually Python is a widely used high-level interpreted language that is very perfect for beginners and Scratch is a visual programming language designed to help kids to learn on how to code. The 8th is Raspberry Pi as a game console. Raspberry Pi game console is a device that allows users to play video games on their television. Now, it is a small, low-cost computer that is designed for hobbyists and tinkerers. 
The Raspberry Pi game console uses a program called emulation to play old video games for from classic consoles like Nintendo Entertainment System and Super Nintendo Inter Entertainment System. Next is we have the web server. Raspberry Pi web server is a computer that hosts a website. It is typically a small, low-cost device that can be used to provide internet access or a host website. Raspberry Pi web servers are popular among hobbyists and small businesses because they are inexpensive and easy to use. So again, Raspberry Pi can be used as a web server, especially if you can use the Apache HTTP server. Raspberry Pi can be also used as a TOR router. Raspberry TOR router is actually a device that uses TOR software to route uh, traffic through the TOR network and this can actually provide increased privacy and security when browsing the internet. It can also be used to access blocked websites and content and a Raspberry Pi TOR router is a configuration of the Raspberry Pi microcomputer that allows it to function as a wireless router that uses TOR to anonymize the internet traffic. Now this setup is particularly used for protecting the privacy of users who are concerned about their online activity being tracked and monitored. Now the TOR or the TOR network is a volunteer-run network of servers that bounce traffic around in order to conceal the user's location and identity. Raspberry Pi can also be used as the HTTC. Now, this is actually a library that allows you to make requests to websites using the Python programming language. It can be used to scrape websites for data or automate tasks that would otherwise require manual input. So Raspberry Pi HTTC is a device that allows users to connect to the internet using a wireless network adapter. It can also be used as a server to provide services such as web hosting, watching Netflix, and even watching the BBC player, and many more. Then another use for Raspberry Pi is that you can use it as the birdhouse. The birdhouse is a project that uses a Raspberry Pi to automate the process of feeding and watering the birds. The project consists of a Raspberry Pi, a water pump, and a feeder, and a water reservoir. The Raspberry Pi is used to control the water pump and feeder and to monitor the water reservoir. The, when the water level in the reservoir falls below a certain point, the Raspberry Pi will activate the water pump to refill it. So the birdhouse is a device that is designed to attract the birds. It is made out of Raspberry Pi. It is a small computer and a few other components. The Raspberry Pi birdhouse can be programmed to play different types of bird songs which will attract birds to the house. And the house has also a built-in camera which can be used to record the birds that visit the house. Raspberry Pi can also be used as a supercomputer. Now, supercomputer in a Raspberry Pi is a computer that uses several Raspberry Pi boards to create a powerful system. Now, this type of computer is often used for complex tasks that requires a lot of horsepower such as scientific, research data, or data analysis. By using several Raspberry Pi boards, a supercomputer can be created for a fraction of the cost of traditional systems. So the Raspberry Pi is a small computer that was designed for educational use. However, it can also be used as a supercomputer by connecting multiple Raspberry Pis together. It is possible to create a powerful computer that can be used for tasks such as data processing or scientific research. Another use for Raspberry Pi is being used as a clock. Raspberry Pi is a digital clock that uses Raspberry Pi as its main component. The Raspberry Pi reads the time from the internet and displays it on a screen or in, a, in an another format. So the Raspberry Pi clock is a digital clock that is designed to be used with the Raspberry Pi computer. Now the clock is based on the DS1307 real-time clock or the RTC chip and it can be used to keep track of time even when the Raspberry Pi is turned off. 
Now the clock can be configured to display in a variety of formats and it can also include a built-in alarm clock. Then lastly for its use and the main use for Raspberry Pi is the Raspberry Pi Pibot. Now the Raspberry Pi Pibot is a small low-cost single board computer designed for students and hobbyists. It can be used to learn how to program, control devices around the home, or even make your own robots. The Pibot can be controlled using a smartphone or a computer, and when it comes to with a variety of programming languages, it is being pre-installed. So the Raspberry Pi based robot is a physical computing device that can be controlled using code, usually written in Python. The Raspberry Pi is a small, low-cost computer that was designed for educational use, but it has been become popular among hobbyists for its versatile and being a low-cost project. So are you excited? Because right now, we will begin our Raspberry Pi journey. Now for the different versions of Raspberry Pi, first we have the first version. Now the first version came with a very small and cheap size but it came too small that it's really hard to use and it has the size of the two coins with only one USB port and one HDMI port to connect it to high screens. The second version of the Raspberry Pi is that it came with a larger size than the previous one with an additional GPIO port which allows connecting electronic components such as switches and LEDs. And we also have the more advanced versions that it came with a more improvement, smaller size and very low cost only at $25. Now here is actually an image that shows the three versions of the Raspberry Pi in the hand of their manufacturers. So we have the different versions of the Raspberry Pi. We have on the left side we have the model B and on the right side we have the model A. So again, the model B has a 700 million hertz low power with a dual core of 250 million hertz with a shared memory of 512 megabyte. So it has an Ethernet, it has a GPIO, HDMI ports, also have an audio jack and an RCA video. Now for the Model A, it has a 700 million hertz low power, the same with the Model B. And it also has a dual core of a 250 million hertz with a shared memory of 256. Now notice the decrease of the memory here for Model A. And for Model A, it does not have any Ethernet. And for the cost, for the difference of the cost, Model B costs a little higher from Model A. Model B is worth $35 while Model A is worth $25. So we have here the Raspberry Pi 2 components. We have the DSi display connector on the left side. We have the SD card slot or the back of within the back of the board. We have the micro USB power, we have the Broadcom BCM2835 with the ARM 11700mHz, we have the HDMI out, the CSI connector camera below, and we also have this big box which is the internet. Then on the right side we have the port here known as the USB 2.0 port, above we have the audio out and we also have the RC video out. Then you have the GPIO headers and as well as the JTAG headers. Now these are the Raspberry Pi 2 components. So the Raspberry Pi Model B it can be seen in this figure wherein the GPIO act as the hands and the 512 megabyte RAM, CPU and GPU acts as the brain and we have here uh, that act as the mouth and ears and we also have another here that act as a hand. So Raspberry Pi components, GPU plus the CPU plus the RAM is equivalent to as the, this Broadcom in the middle as the BCM2835 known as the CPU core as well. So here you can see the another view of the Raspberry Pi components which are the known the 
USB port, we have the HDMI port, the audio jack, and we also have Ethernet port. And more here that can be seen for the components. We also have below here the CSI camera input and the DSI display. We also have above, you can appreciate the SD card being installed or being placed inside. So the OS version is also available for Raspberry Pi. We have the Ubuntu Mate, Snappy Ubuntu Core, we have the Windows 10 IoT Core, the OSMC, the OpenLEC, and we have the PNET and as well as the RISC OS. So the main OS version for Raspberry Pi, the Raspbian, it is the foundation of official supported operating system and you can install it with the noobs or download the image below and follow our installation guide. So Raspbian comes pre-installed with plenty of softwares for education, programming, and general use. It has Python, Scratch, Sonic Pi, Java, and Mathematica, and many more. Raspbian is what is known as the operating system. Similar to Windows running on your home PC, the Raspberry Pi requires an operating system to work. And Raspbian is a special purpose distribution based on the Debian or a variant of Linux. Now the OS is what lets the Raspberry Pi not only run programs but also run multiple programs concurrently. It is accomplished with a scheduler in the OS and simply put this makes programs to take turns and only one program is actually executing at any one time. Now it is also an operating system for media home theater entertainment use, it can turn an old TV uh, into a media center to display high definition movies and watch YouTube. It's based on the XBMC famous media software and a distribution based on the Raspbian edited by famous electronics company Adafruit which developed the system to control an electronic application which makes it easy to use different control protocol. Now, Kali Linux is a Linux distribution based on the backtrack which is one of the best OS for hackers and security experts around the world. Now, offering a variety of hacking tools to a wired and wireless networks, it stands for Robotics Operating System, a specialized operating system for robotics and a system that is used in robotics projects all around the world offering a great tool to make it a controlling robot uh, and doing an easy job. Now developers were able to modify a version of Android to work properly with Raspberry Pi and it's still in the beta stage and a professional version of Linux for experts and anyone who wants a version of the Linux small enough to fit in a Raspberry Pi and fast enough to do all the tasks without slowing the system performance. It's a collection of four different operating systems. We have the Raspbian, Fedora, Rasp BMC, OpenELEC, which allows a beginner to choose and run without any complications. The RISC OS was developed in the early 90s in the UK to help computer and engineering students to learn more about computer ARM based on architecture. Now let's differentiate Arduino versus Raspberry Pi and versus the BeagleBone. Now here is a table that will highlight on the major difference of Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and the BeagleBone. So why Raspberry Pi is the best? It's actually not the fastest, but it's actually the cheapest. As you can observe in this table, we have the Raspberry Pi costing $25,000 only, unlike the Beagle XM, the BeagleBone, the QB Board, the PC Duino, and the Rascal Mi Micro they cost higher than the Raspberry Pi and this Raspberry Pi already has a 700 million hertz to 1 gigahertz. So the course material works with any high-tech board not just the Raspberry Pi. There is a common thing about all the board that works with the ARM base CPU which is the fact that the most of if not all of these boards support Linux, especially the Debian and Ubuntu, which makes the content of this course usable with more of the ARM-based boards in the world. Knowledge that you get in this course won't be exclusive to Raspberry Pi. 
since almost 70% of the course will depend on using Linux and its applications and that allows you to use the same methods, codes, connection, algorithms with almost any available board such as the BeagleBoard, the UduoO, the PCduino, and the Parallela. Now in the section 2, here you can appreciate on how to run the Raspberry Pi. So what do you need to run Raspberry Pi? So you need an SD card that has a 4 gig to 32 gig and a USB charger at least one ampere to run the board at any connected USB device properly. So what do you need to run Raspberry Pi for? We need it for keyboard and mouse. We need it for television screen. You need an HDMI cable, an RC video cable, memory card reader, RCA video cable. Also you need a Raspberry Pi protector cover for protection of our Raspberry and you can just make your own protection cover just to avoid any incidents for our Raspberry Pi. Now you also need breadboard, also female to female wires, we also need Raspberry Pi breakout cable. Now this is just optional if you don't have any and that's okay. And you can get an Adafruit board which you can mount it above the Raspberry Pi board to easy access all the other parts. We also have the other components. We have here the lights, we have here the diodes, and the others. Now getting OS version in Raspberry Pi, I want you to go onto this link and download the Raspbian OS from the website below. And after downloading, unzip the file while using WinRAR or zip for Mac. In running Raspberry Pi, plug in the USB charger to the board and then plug in the SD card to the SD card socket in the board. And getting OS on Raspberry Pi using Windows device, plug in the USB keyboard, mouse, Ethernet cable, and HDMI cable. And after this, right click on the drive and format it using the FAT32 file system. Then plug in the USB cord, mouse, internet cable, and HDMI cable and in running Raspberry Pi now just plug in the power adapter and you're good to go and in setting up Raspberry Pi for the first time you would need this code we have the info we have the expand root we have our scan we have configure keyboard we have how to change pass or password we have to change locale change time zone memory split overclock the SSH the boot behavior and lastly, we have the update. Now, this update is to try to update Raspi, Raspi configuration. The Raspi configuration expands the root and expands the partition to fill in the SD card. Now, you need to configure the board to boot straight to the desktop. Now, don't have if you don't have any Raspberry Pi, now that's not a problem. You can learn it anyway by downloading and installing the simulation environment or in this link so here is a simulation of the Raspberry Pi now to exit the simulation mode just press the control plus alt at any time in simulating Raspberry Pi it has an advantage and it also has a disadvantage first advantage is that it don't need to buy a board it's easy to try Linux environment. It helps you to make programming and internet related experiments. Also, running more than one operating system at one time. But it has this disadvantage. The disadvantage for the simulating Raspberry Pi is that it can't stimulate electronic control projects over the GPIO projects. And it can also consume a bit of your CPU power and RAM. So, the section 3. We have a tour that is inside the Raspberry Pi by operating the system. And a tour inside here is a tour inside Raspberry Pi by operating the system. And the Raspberry Pi command line. The Raspbian has a program called LX Terminal, which gives us access to the system shell, which we will call it as the line interface. 
Now, you can run it from the desktop or from your lock screen menu. So for the Raspberry command line, uh, this is a list of commonly used command line that commands and use the e of them each each can be used as here in this table and updating software packages a tool called the app get is used to update all the software packages within the system and you can install e any software that you want using this too by simply writing install plus plus program name now a tool called the app get is used to update all the software packages within the system as I've said earlier you can install any software that you want using this one by simply writing install plus program name and if you add a Y after or before the program name the setup will continue without asking for any confirmations and you can see here below now to remove any app just replace and install a with remove to update all the software packages and the operating system at once use the order upgrade uh, but don't forget to make execute update order before doing that and you can also get software packages from the Pi store which is similar to iTunes and Google Play Store installing Debian software packages installing a Debian software package that you can get just online any from software developer website now I've provided some sources here where you can download and install these Debian software packages section 4 on controlling Raspberry Pi from another device in controlling using the secure shell or the SSH it mainly consists of a server and a client and one we will need to activate the secure shell server in the Raspberry Pi side and you can observe that in this figure right here now here is an actual figure on how to control using the secure shell server now when controlling using the secure shell server knowing the IP address of the Raspberry Pi using the if config command here and then when getting a client software in our Windows machine now in our case I will use the beauty which is a free and powerful software that provides secure shell server client communication now here is how you control using the SSH or the secure shell server by using the beauty configuration now the third thing you would do on controlling using the SSH or the secure shell server after entering Pi, the IP and port, click on open. Now a window will appear asking you to provide the username. Now Pi and the password is Raspberry. And then fourth, no you can do whatever you like to your board without having to connect it to a screen. Now when controlling, using the VNC protocol first is you need to start by installing the VNC server software in Raspberry Pi and then after the installation had finished you need to run the VNC server by writing the following command the VNC server then place one now you'll be asked to enter a password to enter the device which is different from the Pi password now one final step remains which is Knowing the IP address for the Raspberry Pi board using the if configuration command. And then lastly, know that the board is ready to be controlled by any other device. Now you need to go to the link below and download.
Pi board by going to our internet router and look for the MAC address of the board and assign it to a fixed IP address which can't be changed no matter what. Now here are the steps. First, go to your main internet router page which is usually written in the back of the router and could be any of this like the 192.168.1.1 or it may be 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.254.0 You can see this again at the back of your internet router. Second, the explanation will be on the TP-Link router but it's the same process actually for all. After entering the main router page, you will be asked to provide the username and password. Now, usually the username is admin and the password is admin. Now, this is all in small letters. Then after that, head over to the DHCP settings under the network section. And then, go to the DHCP client list which has all these of all connected devices and their MAC addresses. Now, the MAC address on the B827EB4848D7 is actually for Raspberry Pi Head to address the reservation and add the MAC address that you got. When connecting to Raspberry Pi to another computer using network cable, you would need a standard network cable like this one in this diagram. You would also need an SD card and as well as a Raspberry Pi model. Now setting the Raspberry Pi, you need to remove the Raspberry Pi from the electricity and connect the SD card to your computer. You will get the name boot and then enter the boot folder and open the cmdline.txt which has the startup settings for the Raspberry Pi and then head to the end of the file and add network IP as this one. The IP is 192.168.1.10. Then after finishing the edit, save the file and reattach the SD card to the Raspberry Pi. Now we will give the computer an IP address. Now to do this, attach the Raspberry Pi to the computer using the network cable and then enter the network settings which is shown here. Now you can follow these steps in the figure. Again, we will give the computer an IP address and to do this, attach the Raspberry Pi to the computer using the cable and enter the network settings. Now the network settings is this. The IP address should be 192.168.1.5. For the subnet mask, it should be 255.255.255.255. Point zero. And yes, those are actually 3255 in the subnet mask. For the default gateway, it's 192.168.1.5, the same as the IP address. Now, you can connect to the board using the PUTY or the VNC viewer. Now, note that you need to reset the network setting when you finish working with the board so that your computer can get an automatic IP address from the internet provider. Now we proceed to the section 5 of this course, which is the programming with the GPIO with Python. Raspberry Pi board has 28 connections point or pin called the GPIO. Some of them are used for electronic control output while others are used to send signals called input providing power and communication protocol. For the GPIO power and control pins as you can see on the right side figure. Now the pin 17 provides a 3.3 volt 50 milliampere and in case you need more than 50 milliampere you need to use an external relay to control or you might damage the board. Then we have the pin 24 that provides 5 volt and it is connected to a micro USB on the board. For the pin 6, 9, 14, 20, 25 are for ground. And then for the pin 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26 is for control operation as input or output. You can control this using the written software. Now, an important note here is that pin numbers is different than 
GPIO numbering. For example, pin 3 is GPIO 2. So you always need to return to the image in the documentation for the right numbering. The GPIO communication protocol programming languages now for the Raspberry Pi supports four communication protocols. We have the I2C, the SPI, the UART, and the one wire and these protocols work at the same pins so you can program pins to be input or output or communication protocol for our programming languages raspberry pi supports almost prog all programming languages including c c c sharp or domono java we have python perl ruby pascal and many more and the best language to be used in python since it has so many libraries support documentation as well ex as examples you can choose any language that you are good at and program in raspberry pi by using it for python the basic operations would include is by starting to write hello world in the command line for mathematical calculations in python you can do any mathematical operation easily just type the two numbers and the result will come and to define any variable, just type the variable followed by equal sign, then the value. Now, same thing when it comes to string variable. You can, all, you can also combine mathematical operations with variables, as you can see here. And to close the command line, just press Ctrl plus D. So, all of the previous examples, we wrote code that will be gone once the command line windows is closed. So, to maintain the code, we need to save it in a file with .py extension. Consider the following code. We have x is equals to 3, y is equals to 1 plus 2, sum is equals to x plus y, then print sum. You can write it by doing to menu, then head on to accessories, and then go to leaf pad and write the code, and then click on file, then save, and then assign the name sum.py, then store it inside the home or on the pi folder and then to run the program write python sum.py in the command line now when installing the control library before starting to use python to control the gpio we will install the control library rpi.gpio which we can get by writing this one now connect your raspberry pi 4 let's connect up your raspberry pi and get it running First, check the slot on the underside of your Raspberry Pi to see whether an SD card is inside. If no SD card is there, then insert an SD card with the Raspbian installed via the noobs. Now note that many micro SD cards come inside a larger adapter. You can just slide the smaller card out using the lip at the bottom of the SD card. And then find the USB connector end of your mouse's cable and connect the mouse to a USB port on your Raspberry Pi. Now it doesn't matter which port you use here. And then connect to the keyboard in the same way. Make sure your screen is plugged into a wall socket and then switched on. Look at the HDMI ports on your Raspberry Pi and then notice that they have this flat side on top. Then use a cable to connect the screen to the Raspberry Pi's HDMI port. So use an HDMI adapter if necessary. Now for the Raspberry Pi 4. Raspberry Pi 4, now connect your screen to the first Raspberry Pi for HDMI port, labeled as the HDMI 0. You could connect an optional second screen in the same way also here. Raspberry Pi 1, 2, 3. Connect your screen to a single HDMI port. Now note that nothing will display on the screen because the Raspberry Pi is not running yet. If you want to connect the Pi to the internet via Ethernet, use an Ethernet cable to connect the internet port on the Raspberry Pi to an internet socket on the wall or on your internet router. You don't need to do this if you want to use wireless connectivity or if you don't want to connect to the internet. If your screen has speakers, your Raspberry Pi can play sound through this. Or you could connect headphones or speakers to the audio port. And then, 
plug the power supply into a socket and then connect it to your Raspberry Pi's USB power port. Then you should see a red light on your Raspberry Pi and raspberries on the monitor. Your Raspberry Pi then boots up into this graphical desktop which is seen here. desktop and save the file as rp.txt. Now you should see an icon named rp.txt. would appear on the desktop. Your file has been saved to your Raspberry Pi's SD card. Close the text editor by clicking the X on the right top hand corner of the window. Return to the menu, click on shutdown and then click on reboot. When Raspberry Pi has rebooted, your text file should still be there on the desktop. Raspberry Pi runs a version of an operating system called Linux for Windows and for Mac OS that are other operating systems. Now this operating system allows you to make things happen by typing in commands instead of clicking on menus options. Now to try this out, click on the terminal symbol at the top of the screen. Now here, you can see the operating system that I have mentioned a while ago. Now in the window that appears, type ls and then press enter on the keyboard and you can see a list of the files and folders in your home directory. Now try typing this command to change directory to the desktop. Type cd, then space, then desk. You have to press the enter key after every command. And then type ls. Can you see the text file you created? Now close the terminal window by clicking on the X. Now drag rp.txt to the waste basket on the desktop so the Raspberry Pi will be tidy for the next person who would be using it. Now browsing the web. You might want to connect your Raspberry Pi to the internet. If you didn't plug into an internet cable or to a Wi-Fi network during the setup, then you can connect now. Click the icon with the red crosses on the top right hand corner of the screen and select your network from the drop down menu. You may need to ask an adult which network you should choose. So type in the password for your wireless network or ask an adult to type it for you and then click OK. When your Pi is connected to the internet, you will see a wireless LAN symbol instead of the red crosses. So click on the web browser icon and then search for Raspberry Pi. Now what are the challenge on exploring your Raspberry Pi? Now, let's take a tour of the menu that you can find. A version of Scratch, a Python game to play, a version of Minecraft that you can program. So congrats! Project complete! Thank you for following and for completing the steps that I have mentioned. Now for the Nano, for the code editor to be used, Nano is one of the best text editor in command, line environment inside Linux systems. 
we will use it as our default coding program. Now, it's really simple to run it. It's just to write your nano, your file name, and it will open a new file with the name you assigned in the previous command. For example, number one, we have the blinking LED. Goal from example is that running an LED and make it turn on and off indefinitely. Now, this would require these following components. You need the breadboard, Raspberry Pi board, an LED, a 300 ohm resistor, and connection wires. For preparing project parts, now this is just the same as I've mentioned earlier. You would need to be running an LED and making it turn on and off indefinitely. So for the example one, we have the blinking LED. We have here uh, this coding here for our Raspberry Pi. So applying the code and see the result. To close the program, click Control C to run the code right. If you try to run it again using the same sentence, you will get warning and tell you that the output you are trying to use is already used. And this message would appear when running a software after another at the very same port. You could ignore this message and if you would like to hide it, use this sentence. Type gpio.setwarnings, open and close parenthesis, false. Now this again will hide this sentence. Now this is used to call libraries. This is always the start of each program, calling time library for time measurements and calling the GPIO library. Now setting the pin function as input or output here. Now while is used to repeat the commands indefinitely for a defined number of times, used to turn the output on and off depending on the numbers inside the practices. First number is the, the pin number while second is the state on or off. Now note that you can use true or false instead of on and off. To control the amount of time used for the previous line to be executed or viewed by the user, now you would need to wait for one second. So we will develop the code so that it will show a line after turning the LED on and off. Now this is the result on the nano editor screen. Reading the input values from a switch. Now the goal from example is reading digital input values using a switch and display results on screen. Now it will require again a breadboard, Raspberry Pi board, switch, 10K ohm resistors, connection wires. And example number two is reading input values from a switch. So explaining the if statement, here we have this coding here for the if statement. Again, this is explaining the if statement. Now for the example number three, in running the LED using the LDR, the goal here is running an LED and make it turn on and off using the light emitting diode. Here, you would need a breadboard, Raspberry Pi board, an LED, and a 10K ohm resistor, a 300 ohm resistor, and an LDR light emitting diode, and connection wires. Now, save the file and then run the code, the sudo Python light sensor that Pi, then close the light room or place your hand at the LDR and see what will happen to the LED. So first, you can change true to false and see the result. Two is that you can add print sentence when executing the two output commands. So here is an example on the running the LED using the LDR. For the example number four, we have the PIR motion detector. Now, the PIR is one of the most important sensors in practical life. It is actually used in many projects such as protection and smart doors. You can see it mostly in centers and company doors which opens once you get close to it. Now, these type of sensors can use different methods to detect ultrasonic waves, infra infrared signals, and many more. And in this lesson, we will use the IR-based PIR motion detector. So again, this sensor can sense the presence of an object at a distance of 7 to 10 meter and an angle be between 90 to 110 degrees. And this is enough for a small room. This sensor has three connection points which are Volt in 3, 
to 5 volt red wire, digital out yellow wire, and ground black wire. And then we will connect the red wire to the pin 1 in the Pi which is the 5 volt output. Then connect the yellow wire to the 23 pin and connect the black wire to pin number 6 which is the ground. So start the editor by click by typing on the nanomotion.py and following the rest of the code. Then run the code and see the result. The detector gives 3 volt output signal whenever a motion is detected. And to improve the code, we will add 300 ohm resistor and an LED and edit the code as the following. The BCM numbering instead of numbering by order. Now there are two famous numbering systems for port numbering. We have board numbering and we have BCM numbering. Most people prefer to use BCM numbering instead of board numbering because add the fruit breakout cable just like the image you have seen. Note that the BCM numbering is the one inside the boxes at the both sides while the board numbering is on the side of the circles. Here. Now here you can appreciate the BCM numbering instead of numbering by order. Now where is the difference? The only difference is in the calling method of the GPIO library in Python. If we want to run the terminals in the GPIO order, we will call the library using GPIO.setMode, open and close parentheses, GPIO.board, all caps. If we want to run the port using BCM numbering, we must call the library using this line. GPIO.setMode, open and close parentheses, GPIO.bcm. Now note that this is important thing to do because you will find lots of projects online using BCM numbering so you need to take a good care of this and connect all components to pin the right way. For the Adafruit protection box and connection cable, the Adafruit is considered as one of the biggest open source electronic companies that have many products for Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and much more. This company provides protection box and cable that are necessary before starting to use the Raspberry Pi. Note that the cable uses BCM numbering, so be sure to import the BCM library in Python. Assembling the protection box. Assembling Adafruit GPIO breakout cable. Raspberry Pi OS. The Raspberry Pi OS is a free operating system based on Debian optimized for the Raspberry Pi hardware and is the recommended operating system for normal use on a Raspberry Pi. The OS comes with over 35,000 packages, a pre-compiled software bundled in a nice format for easy installation on your Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi OS is under active development with, with an emphasis on improving the stability and performance of as many Debian packages as possible on the Raspberry Pi. Updating and upgrading Raspberry Pi OS It's important to keep your Raspberry Pi up to date. The first and probably the most important reason is security. A device running Raspberry Pi OS contains millions of lines of code that you rely on. Over time, these millions of lines of code will expose well-known vulnerabilities which are documented in publicly available databases meaning that they are easy to exploit. The only way to mitigate these exploits as a user of Raspberry Pi OS is to keep your software up to date as the upstream repositories track CVEs closely and try to mitigate them quickly. The second reason which is re just related to the first is that the software you are running on your device most certainly contains bugs, and some bugs are CVEs, but bugs could also be affecting the desired functionality without being related to security. By keeping your software up to date, you are lowering the chances of hitting these bugs. Using the APT The easiest way to manage installing, upgrading, and removing software is using APT or the Advanced Packaging Tool from Debian. To update software in Raspberry Pi OS, you can use the APT tool from a terminal window. APT keeps a list of software sources on your Pi in a file on the 
etc, etc apt sources.list before installing software you should update your package list with the apt update now go ahead and open the terminal window and type sudo apt update then next upgrade all your installed packages to their la latest versions with the following command sudo apt or app full upgrade in using the apt note that the full upgrade is used in preference to a simple upgrade as it also picks up any dependency changes that may have been made now generally speaking doing this regularly will keep your installation up to date for the particular major raspberry pi os release you are using now it will not update from one major release to another but for example stretch to buster or buster to bullseye however there are occasional changes made in the raspberry pi os image that require manual intervention for example a newly introduced package these are not installed with an upgrade as this command only updates the packages you have already installed now note that the kernel and firmware are installed as a debian package and so will also get updates when using the procedure above these packages are updated free infrequently and after extensive testing if moving an existing sd card to a new raspberry pi model for example the pi 0 2w you may also need an update to the kernel and the firmware first using the instructions above now when you're running out of space when running sudo app full upgrade it will show how much data it will be downloaded and how much space it will take up on the sd card and it's worth checking with the df slash h that you have enough free disk space as unfortunately app will not do this for you also be aware that downloaded package files are kept in the archives and you can remove this in order to free up space with sudo app clean when in upgrading from previous operating system versions now a warning here is that upgrading an existing image is possible but it is not guaranteed to work in every circumstance and we do not recommend it if you do wish to try upgrading your operating system version we strongly suggest making a backup first we can accept no responsibility for loss of data from a failed update the latest version of the raspberry pi os is based on the debian bullseye the previous version was based on buster if you want to perform an in-place upgrade from buster to bullseye and you're aware of the and you're aware of the risk just see the instructions in the forum searching for software you can search the archives for a package with a given keyword with app cache search you can view more information about a package before installing it with an app cache show now installing a package with app typing this command the sudo app install tree should inform the user how much this space the package will take up and ask for confirmation of the package installation entering y or just pressing enter as yes is the default action and it will allow the installation to occur this can be bypassed by adding the the negative sign y flag to the command installing this package makes three available for the user you can uninstall a package with an app remove the user is prompted to confirm the removal by typing the sudo app remove tree and again the negative y flag will auto confirm you can also choose to completely remove a package and its associated configuration files with app purge by typing sudo app purge tree installing a package with app just type sudo app install tree and again typing this command should inform the user how much this space the package would take up and ask for confirmation of the package installation using rpi update now this is a command line application that will update your raspberry pi os kernel and video course firmware to the latest pre-release versions now the rpi update script is supplied by a third party the hexe and it is also supported by raspberry pi engineers the script source can be found on the github or in this link and what it does is that it will download the latest pre-release versions of the linux kernel 
Its matching modules, a device tree files, along with the latest versions of the VideoCorp firmware. It will then install these files to relevant locations on the SD card, overwriting any previous versions. Now, all the source data used by the RPI update comes from the GitHub repo or in this link. Now, this repository simply contains a subset of data from the official firmware repository, as not all the data from the repo that repo is required. So again, if you are sure that you need to use the RPI update, it is advisable to take a backup for your current system. The first as running RPI update could result in a non-booting system. The RPI update needs to be a run as root. Once the update is complete, you will need to reboot. It has number of options which are documented at the Hexa GitHub repository or in this link. And you, if you have the RPI update already, and you find that things are not working as you wish, if your Raspberry Pi is still bootable, you can return to the stable release using this code. And you will need to reboot your Raspberry Pi for these changes to take effect. Playing audio and video. Now, the simplest way of playing audio and video on Raspberry Pi is to use the installed OMX Player application. This is the hardware accelerated and play many popular audio and video file formats. The OMX player uses the OpenMax Hardware Acceleration Interface or the API, which is the officially supported media API in Raspberry. The OMX player was developed by the Kodi Projects by Edgar Husek. The OMX player application. The OMX player application is the simple command line is OMX player. The media file can be audio or video or both. For the examples below, we use an H.264 video file format that is included with the standard Raspberry Pi OS installation. When displaying video, the whole display will be used as output. You can specify which part of the display you want the video to be on using the op window option. You can also specify which part of the video you want to be displayed and this is called as the crop window. This portion of the video will be scaled up to the match display unless you also use the window option. If you're using Raspberry Pi touch display, you want to use it for video output. Use the display option to specify which display to use. Now 5 for HDMI, 4 for the touch screen. With the Raspberry Pi 4, you have two options for HDMI output. And then N is 2 for HDMI 0 and 7 for HDMI 1. Now how to play the audio? To play an mp3 file, navigate to the location of the MP that mp3 file in the terminal using CD and then type the following command, the OMX player example that mp3. This will play the audio file example that mp3 through either your monitor's built-in speakers or your headphones connected via the headphone jack and if you need an example file you can download one from here using the following command if you cannot hear anything make sure your headphones and speakers are connected correctly note that the OMX player doesn't use Alisa and so ignores the audio configuration set by Raspberry config or Amixer if OMX player auto detection of correct audio output device fails, you can force output over HDMI with OMX player negative O HDMI example dot mp3. Alternatively, you can force output over the headphone jack with this code. You can even force output over the headphone jack and HDMI with this code. So how to play video? The OMX player application, now to play a video here, you need to navigate the, to the location of your video file in the terminal using CD, then type the following command. This will play the example, the MP4 in the full screen, then hit Ctrl plus C to exit. On the Pi 4, hardware software for the MPEG 2 and VC1 codecs has been removed, so we can recommend the use of the VLC application which supports this format in software. In addition, VLC has hardware supports 
for H264 and the new HEVC codec. Now, an example video here is that a video sample of the animated film by Big Buck Bunny is available on your Raspberry Pi. To play it, just enter the following command into a terminal window. Here, you can see here below. Now, in a Pi 4, use the following command for H264 files. Or for H264, VC1, or MPEG2. When using VLC, you can improve playback performance by encapsulating the raw H264 stream. For example, from the Raspberry Pi camera module, this is really done using by the FFmpeg. Pl that playback is also improved if VLC is run full screen. Either select full screen from the user interface or you can add the full screen options to the VLC command line. This example command converts video that H264 to a containerized video that MP4 at 30 frames per second. The FFmpeg negative R30 negative I video H264 negative C V copy video that MP4. Now options during playback. There are a number of options available during playback. Action by pressing the appropriate key. Not all options will be available in the all files. The list of key bindings can be displayed using OMX player keys. So that ends our course for getting started with Raspberry Pi. If you have the need to ask questions, feel free to message me on my Skype, on my email, or on my phone number. Just message me anytime for any clarifications on this video tutorial. Again, thank you for listening.